On Point with Craig's Investment Partners. The information provided here is general in nature. It's not financial advice. It doesn't take into account your financial situation, objectives, goals or risk tolerance. All investments are subject to risks and none are guaranteed. So before you make any investment decisions, we recommend you contact an investment advisor. For more information about our services in that regard, you can go to our website, which is craigsip.com. Welcome to On Point. I'm Mark Lister, Investment Director at Craig's Investment Partners, and I'll be talking about a range of topics, including economics, portfolio strategy, investor education, and anything else that's happening out there in financial markets. Hi team, another week down. Let's look back at how it was. The US market, the S&P 500, had a very good week. It was up 2.5%. That's the best weekly performance in almost three months. So it wasn't quite enough to see the US market or the S&P 500, I should say, finish August in the green. Uh, it still ended 1.8% lower. So it was still the worst uh, the worst month since February, uh, the first negative month since February. So we've had five months in a row where the market was up and now it's broken that winning streak. streak. Uh, however, at one point it was heading for a decline of about 5%. So to be down 1.8, probably not too bad for US shares. August is often a volatile month and September, which has obviously just begun, is even worse. It's actually the weakest month of all for US shares. And historically, uh, you go back uh, to 1945, September has seen an average return of minus half a percent, which is the lowest of all months. And it's certainly well below the average return for all months of plus 0.7. It's, it's also got a pretty poor hit rate uh, for being up. Uh, 44% of the time it's been up. So um, 56% of the time it's been down. So more often than not, September has been down. And that's a much lower hit rate than the other 11 months, uh, which are up 62% of the time or have been up uh, historically. So uh, not surprising that we've we've come off the back of a, a slightly more difficult performance and there is potential that we could see some more volatility through September as well. Europe up 1.7% last week, the UK market up 1.5% and the Aussie market uh, rallied very strongly up 2.7%. So we have seen an across the board rebound. The local market was up, the NZX50 rose 0.5%, so a little bit more subdued. You know, we've had the reporting season and there was a lot of cautious comments Uh, We've got the election coming up, so people are still a little bit standoffish uh, across the local market. Tourism Holdings was the top performer. That stock was up 9.7%, released a very good result and is making some great progress uh, in the tourism sector, obviously, in, in better shape than it was during those COVID years. So THL was uh, the star of the show. Well, I did record a video with a colleague last week, which is on our website. It's available for, for all clients to watch. It was about an hour long and Mo Singh, who is a uh, our star research analyst or or one of our star research analysts because they're all very good but most certainly um, uh, uh, very very astute him and I spoke at length about the New Zealand reporting season the winners the losers what we can expect from here and he had some really good insights about different stocks different sectors and um, it's it's absolutely worth a watch or a listen for people that are thinking about the outlook and what it might mean for their portfolio. We cover plenty of other stuff too, what's happening in terms of the housing market, what we expect from the upcoming election, uh, and, and plenty of other things. So go go have a hunt around for that. If you can't find it, uh, check in with your advisor or just ask me and I'll point you in the right direction. But anyway, um, that was equity markets. Interest rates, they were down uh, last week. The US two-year Treasury yield, which you might recall um, week before last, hit the highest levels we've seen since 2007. Uh, It fell back a little bit. It was off uh, about 20 basis points, so finished just under 4.9%. The 10-year Treasury yield down slightly lower uh, at 4.2%. And our five-year swap rate here in New Zealand was was also off. We fell from 
about 5% to about 4.8. So interest, interest rates have, have come down a little bit uh, over the last several days. Markets are starting to think twice about whether central banks will tighten monetary policy any further. Um, we've seen the odds for another interest rate hike in both the US as well as here in New Zealand decline. So in the US, the odds are, are sitting today at about 38% for one more rate hike. So, you know, 60 odd percent chance of no change that the Fed is done. And that's um, a bit more, what's well, a bit different from where we were at a week or two ago when odds were sort of, they'd swung in favour of another rate hike. The Fed meets uh, later this month in September. So we'll, we'll find out if they do anything then and if they uh, give us any more colour about their train of thought. But I certainly believe that there's a, a strong chance that the Fed has done enough and will just sit tight from here. Likewise in New Zealand. Uh, I've, I've been saying for a little while now that I am of the view that they are probably done and that we won't see any more OCR hikes. You never know, could be wrong, but pricing has moved in favour of that line of thought just recently and it wasn't so long ago that market pricing as well as quite a few economists were suggesting that they might have to to move further so again time will tell uh our reserve bank decision our next decision i think is due on the 4th of october so um got about a month till we get a bit more clarity there uh, looking back at last week's key key developments, key economic news, we'll start here in New Zealand and we had some good news on the business confidence front, the ANZ Business Outlook Survey, which is a monthly survey, very useful, um, gives you a real finger on the pulse view of how businesses are thinking and feeling, what they see ahead, what they're doing, are they finding it hard to get staff, easy to get staff, do they think their profits are going up, down or sideways? Uh, what are they doing with prices? So this survey is a really good um, leading indicator for where economic activity is and where it's going and likewise inflation. So I watch it very closely. And it was great to see a pleasing lift in overall confidence as well as more progress on inflation. So we saw headline confidence improve to the highest since June 2021. So it's bounced back to levels we haven't seen for more than two years, still below the, the long-term average, but um, certainly better than we've seen in recent times in own activity, which is a, a more useful indicator for future growth. That also increased. So we've seen that. We've seen that um, in positive territory now for three months, and it's sitting at the highest level since December 2021, so about 18 months or, or thereabouts. So um, that's that's great news. It does tell us that firms are in better spirits and that they uh, are seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Um, as always, at an industry level, uh, things are a little bit different. Agriculture, obviously, much more downbeat than most. Um, profitability expectations falling sharply. And on the other side of the coin, construction has become a lot more optimistic. Construction has been very much in the doldrums uh, from a sentiment perspective over the last 12 months or so. But I think now that you've seen the housing market stabilise, um, prices have found a base, rebounded slightly, that has has seen the construction sector um certainly the spirits have lifted there so that's great news so all in all uh good to see businesses in slightly better heart inflation indicators also uh came down you know they're still high uh still still higher than anyone wants them to be but they continue to uh to come down so we saw pricing intentions which is essentially a measure of what firms are, are intending to do with prices you know, over the next few months. You know, Are they planning to put them up or put them down or leave them unchanged? Um, not many places ever put prices down, do they? So it's more a case of, of whether they're going up or not going up. But that fell to the uh, lowest since January 2021. So it's well down from the highs. And finally, wages as well. Expectations for wage settlements over the next 12 months Fell, fell further, so down at 3.7% now, which is way below uh, what it was not so long ago. So um, good news, I think, on that front in, in terms of business confidence, some of those leading indicators and um, inflation indicators. 
Uh, looking out there everywhere else, there was a whole heap of data that came out of the United States. Uh, we had the ISM index, the Institute for Supply Management index, uh, the manufacturing one, at least the services ISM index is not out until I think Wednesday, overnight on Wednesday, but the manufacturing index, better than expected, uh, still still below break even for the 10th consecutive month, so manufacturing in a bit of a slump still, but better than expected, the highest since February, and you know it does at least feel like you started to get a little bit of a base across the manufacturing sector. We also had the August jobs report out of the US, and that pointed to an easing US labour market. The, the headline figures uh, were that we saw another 187,000 jobs created for the month. So that's ahead of forecast, it's above July, uh, but still low compared to what we've seen over the last 12 or 18 months. However, we did see the unemployment rate rise. So it rose from 3.5% to 3.8%. That's the highest we've seen since back in February. And it, it does reflect an easing market, which is a good thing because we need a little bit of an easing across the US labour market to give the Fed confidence that inflation uh, won't sort of rise up again. So it's it's a really important uh, piece of the puzzle. That's actually quite a big increase in just one month, you know, to go from 3.5 to 3.8. We saw a move of a similar magnitude in May of this year. But apart from uh, that month and also the period of the pandemic where unemployment was obviously rocketing ahead because you know there was lots of layoffs and uh, everything was closed. Um, apart from those two examples, we haven't seen an increase of that magnitude over one month since 2010. So it is something we need to keep an eye on. Now it might be might sound unusual for me to say on the one hand more jobs were added, but on the other hand unemployment went up. Part of that is because of a rising participation rate. But you also need to remember that there's, there's two different surveys that sort of feed into this month, monthly jobs report that you get out of the US. So we have the, um, uh, we have the establishment survey, which is what the payrolls are based on. That's the sort of number of new jobs created. And that's a survey of companies. And then you have the, uh, the, the household survey. And it's that, that one which derives the unemployment rate. So you've sort of got two surveys and the calculations and the way they do it are slightly different. So you sometimes can get the odd mixed message, especially when you're at turning points in the labour market. And we're probably at a bit of a turning point where all of that strength we've seen is just starting to turn into uh, not severe weakness, but a little bit of weakness. So uh, that's that's the reason for some some differences. Uh, wage growth also more muted than expected. Average hourly earnings were wasn't up as much as expected. It was actually the lowest in 18 months. And the average pace of growth in um, average hourly earnings fell to 4.3%, which is the equal lowest since July 2021. So good news there as well. That's, that's a positive for uh, the, the, the Federal Reserve and the path of inflation. Speaking of inflation, we had some more inflation figures come out of the US and it feels like they come out really often because they do sort of about every fortnight you get one inflation measure or another. Uh, it was the, the personal consumption expenditures report this time and that, that is important because it is one of the Fed's preferred inflation measures. Uh, largely in line with expectations uh, at the headline level the annual pace of inflation increased slightly, came up from 3.0 to 3.3. That was expected, you know, it's partly a function of, you know, what was happening a year ago and sort of your starting point, the base effects, as they call it. But that's still low. Um, aside from last month, that's the lowest since March 2021. So things are still moving in the right direction there. The core PCE, still a bit stickier. That's sitting at 4.2%. So that's above June at 4.1. At These figures were all for July. But it's still, uh, apart from that, uh, the lowest since... Um, October 2021. So more of the same there in line with the expectations, but everything sort of tracking as as people expected. 
We also got some figures out of China, uh, official purchasing managers indices. Uh, these were for the month of August. Still pretty weak, although pleasingly it did look like things have stabilised. But it does feel like they are starting to take action. You know, They've really intensified efforts to stimulate the economy and support the currency. Uh, stable currencies are really important. You don't want to see your currency fall because then you get that sort of capital flight. All the all the money tries to leave your country, which isn't helpful at all. There've been more targeted measures. It hasn't been sort of the the big bang sort of stimulus that they've used uh, in the past. They have sort of been a bit more um, specific about about what they'll do. Um, but it seems to be having an impact. Some of those um, changes that we've seen come out of China. Um, looking ahead, uh, locally, pretty quiet week. We've got uh, dairy auction. So after what we've seen lately, you know, the last auction was terrible. Prices off 7.4% and took them down to the lowest uh, since November 2018. So uh, hopefully we will see a better outcome this week. But the dairy sector still has uh, plenty of challenges ahead um, with prices where they are and with the payout at levels where some farmers will will not be profitable. Um, a lot of it comes down to sort of, you know, debt levels and I guess how much you've paid for your farm. So some would argue that look, this is just what happens when, um, you know, you borrow lots of money at very low interest rates and you pay big prices for assets, whether it's a property or whether it's a farm, and then interest rates make a move on you. So that 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 is probably somewhat true, but it is a sector that we, we need to um, keep a close eye on because of how important it is for the New Zealand economy. Uh, outside of that, we have got um, you know a couple of GDP partials coming up um, this week. Uh, we have building volumes and manufacturing activity due, and these will be important pieces of, of the puzzle for June quarter GDP here in New Zealand. So you know, as those things come out, economists will be able to firm up their e estimates for where economic activity has landed in, in the quarter, uh, and that's important because we obviously saw. Uh, a contraction in the final quarter of last year and in the first quarter of this year. So for the second quarter, you know, what will we see? Will we see a bounce back? Will we see, you know, something else? Who knows? I think the the GDP figures are due out on the 21st of this month. So still only um, two or three weeks to go. So those are the bits and pieces that we're watching for out of NZ. Uh, on the central banking front, we have got the Reserve Bank of Australia on Tuesday afternoon, 4.30 that will be. Um, and who else we got? The Bank of Canada, I think. That might be on Wednesday. So those two meetings and the Fed in the US will release, release its beige book, which is an indication of where economic activity is tracking. So that always gets a bit of attention. But the RBA across the Tasman, I suspect they'll do nothing. You know, they are at 4.1%. Uh, people have been thinking that they might move a little bit higher, but my suspicion is that this week they'll do nothing. We did get some uh, economic, what am I saying, inflation figures out of Australia last week. They have a monthly consumer price index indicator, and for July that fell to 4.9%. So it's quite below, quite a bit below forecasts, which were for 52 actually the lowest since February of last year. So that, that's that been a little bit hit and miss in the past. You know, the monthly indicator um, hasn't always given you a, a great and accurate view on what the official quarterly figures will look like. The quarterly figures are at 6.0, um, but it's still an important piece of the puzzle. So I think the RBA will definitely sit on their hands this week and we'll just have to watch and wait uh, in terms of what they do beyond that. Also, that meeting is important because it is Governor Philip Lowe's last meeting. You know, he's um, he's exiting and uh, his deputy, Michelle Bullock, is taking over. Um, she's, I think she's got a seven-year term that begins on the 18th of September. She's been at the RBA a long time, so it will, I expect to be various, a very seamless um, transition. But uh, she will take over and so the next RBA meeting, which will be in early October, uh, you have a new governor. Um, 
Other than that, a little bit quiet. Uh, in the US, it'll be a holiday shortened week. Markets will be closed for Labor Day on Monday. So bond markets closed, share markets closed. Other than that, um, we will be watching to see if anything more comes out of China. You know, will we see more efforts from policymakers to stimulate the economy, support the troubled property sector, and how will uh, investors and financial markets react to some of those measures that we saw put in place on, on Friday? All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks all. Appreciate your time. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk again soon. With the election now just six weeks away, there's a lot of questions out there about how we'll see markets perform in the aftermath. If you want to know what's happened through history in terms of share markets, interest rates and the Kiwi dollar after elections have taken place, have a listen to this episode. For more insights, visit craigsip.com.